Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this webinar from Amazon Web Services. I'm Stephen Quigg, I'm the Principal Security Architect for Asia Pacific, working with our customers to help them build their own secure solutions on Amazon. We're just getting started now. What we'll cover today, I want to go back to basics. Amazon security and the shared responsibility model between Amazon and our customers. I then want to talk about how you can use Amazon's global reach and availability to build your own global reach and availability. Then we'll look at building your own secure virtual private cloud within Amazon. Then we'll walk through Amazon's identity and access management system and how you can make the most of it, including many of the new features that we've just released. I'll then talk about how you can protect your content on the multitude of storage services that you have access to within Amazon Web Services. And then finally, we'll look at building your own secure applications on top of our secure environment. So first up, shared responsibility for security. Every customer of Amazon has access to the same security capabilities. We deliver to you a number of services these services are formally audited every six months, for example. We go through a SOC 1 and a SOC 2 audit, and we publish those audit reports to our customers. We maintain ISO 27001 certification, which gives you assurance over our security management procedures within Amazon. We're a certified PCI Level 1 service provider. Now, Level 1 is the highest tier in PCI, which means you can put lots and lots of credit cards into our environment and meet your own compliance objectives. We also have FedRAMP certification in the States for the US government. Uh, we also have FIPS 142 for those customers. You can build HIPAA compliant. HIPAA is one of the US healthcare security standards. You can build HIPAA compliant applications if you have US customers. Or if you're working with streaming media and media that falls under the jurisdiction of the Motion Picture Association of America, you can also meet their requirements when you build your solution on Amazon. Security is a shared responsibility. We have a culture of security and continual improvement. We have our own ongoing audits and assurance programs. We are working every day to protect large-scale service endpoints on the internet to you. You choose how you want to configure and use our security features. We have a mature marketplace with many security vendors and their products in there. You can implement and manage your own security controls, which can give you additional assurance above the security controls that Amazon provides. What this means for you is that because we have certification and compliance, that you can have certification and compliance. You can build your own PCI compliant applications, your own HIPAA compliant healthcare app applications. If you want to certify your organization against ISO 27001, then you can do so with a much reduced scope. If you are subject to audit at the moment, for example, your end of year financial audit, then those systems can run on Amazon and your auditors can still audit them just like they would today. We do much of the heavy lifting. We run secure facilities. We do all the physical security. We do the hypervisor. We do the network virtualization. We provide storage systems. We harden our service endpoints. You get to choose how you want to configure your Amazon resources, our firewalls, your operating systems, your applications, your user management, and deliver the right level of security for your business. It's very important to state that our customers retain full ownership and control of their content. It's your intellectual property, your private data, and you can choose how you want to manage that. When you select an Amazon region and you put your content in that region, then we won't automatically replicate that elsewhere. You can always choose to encrypt your content to give you additional assurance over Amazon's protection. The security of our services and our customers is key to us. Security starts at the top. We have a dedicated chief information security officer and a strong cultural focus on security. 
we have dedicated internal teams constantly looking at the security of our services, our cryptography, at incidents. And our support personnel have no access to your content. If you have raised a support case and you need help from an Amazon support engineer, then you have to grant the access for that support engineer before they can ever access any of your things. Let's look at our global reach and availability. We have nine regions across the world, and you choose which of our regions you want to use. That might be one region, that might be multiple regions, but you're always in control of geographically where your information lives. Within each region, we always have multiple availability zones. Availability zones are collections of physical assets that are isolated from each other from a failure point of view. This means within a region, you can utilize multiple availability zones to build your own high availability. We also have edge locations for CloudFront, our content delivery network. There are currently 46 edge locations across the world. We're adding more all the time. This means that when you're using an Amazon region and might be some distance from your customers, you can use CloudFront to deliver content and cache content very close to your customers, speeding up your performance and giving your company global reach. Because we build scalable fault tolerant services, you can build your own scalable fault tolerant services. In Amazon, we don't have disaster recovery data centers. We have a culture of resilience where everything is always on. You can choose now to build your own always on applications. You can still build disaster recovery in Amazon. Indeed, many companies use Amazon for their disaster recovery, but now you have that choice. And every single region in Amazon is managed and secured to exactly the same standards, no matter where in the world you are. Every region has robust connectivity and bandwidth. We always have multiple redundant tier one ISP service providers, multiple power grids. We have a resilient network infrastructure. This becomes your robust connectivity and bandwidth. You don't tell us how much internet capacity you need, for example. We give you as much as you want to use at any point in time, which gives you full access to Amazon's size and scale in that region. Let's look now at how you can build your own secure virtual private cloud. As I said, every region has multiple availability zones. Your virtual private cloud, or VPC as we commonly call it, spans every availability zone in that region. You control the IP address range for your virtual private cloud. It's a private IP address space that you allocate. The maximum size of address space that you can allocate is a slash 16 network, which gives you over 65,000 IP addresses. Think of the IP address space that you choose. Maybe you will create multiple virtual private clouds within your Amazon account, within region or multiple region. Think of overlaps that you may have with your existing internal address space, and we'll come a bit later to talk about why that's important. You may not always need to create the maximum amount of space within your VPC, but neither should you choose too small a space because you may need the scale and capacity later. But what this shows you is that your virtual private cloud is private to you. Every customer gets to choose that private address space. You are not sharing that address space with anyone else. Let's look at a single availability zone just now as we start to build our secure virtual private cloud. Once you've chosen your address space, you can then start dividing that into as many subnets as you would like. Subnets are placed within availability zones and you can create as many there as you feel the need to for your application architecture. When you start launching your own compute instances, you choose the subnets. Let's take a very basic model here where we have a web server, an application server, a database, typical web application, and then we have a management network where we maybe have some jump and administration hosts and we have some log servers. The virtual private cloud has security groups that act as firewalls for your compute instances. So here, for example, we add a security group that controls how traffic flows between our web server and our application server. Typically, that may be on port 8080. But here's the trick. By default, you can have up to five security groups for every instance. 
So let's create another security group that lets all of our production web app database write their logs back to the logging server. And let's create another security group that allows our jump host to access all of our other servers using SSH, for example. What this means is that rather than manage one large set of firewall rules, you can break your rules into different functions so that when you change those rules, you'll just have to change those functions. And all of these changes to your security groups happen in real time. You don't have to start and stop anything. They are applied instantly. Security groups are stateful. By default, Ingress is set to deny everything and Egress, so they're denied by default. You can choose how to configure them. Each security group, by default, can have 50 rules. So what this means is that for every instance in your environment, you can have five security groups with 50 rules each, giving you 250 stateful rules for that instance. Now, within your virtual private cloud, there is a router. And remember, this is within Amazon here. So your router is part of the virtual private cloud. You don't have to think about the physical hardware. The router will allow every subnet within the VPC to route by default to any other subnet. One thing that we do that can stop that routing behavior is we have network access control lists. Network access control lists are applied to the subnet rather than the instance. But this is where you can then set hard and fast rules to actually stop inter-subnet communication. In our simple web application database three-tier architecture, we know that typically the web server should never communicate directly to the database server, so we can use network access control list to prevent those traffic flows. Network access controls or NACLs are optional. They are open by default and they're applied at the subnet level. They apply to every instance in that subnet. You can choose whether or not to use network access controls. I always urge our customers to look at them as a good second line of defense over and above your security groups. So that maybe if you make an accidental or wrong change to security group, the network access control will still block that unwanted traffic from your network. We talk a lot in Amazon about elasticity, about the elastic workload that can scale up and scale down. Elastic load balancers are the Amazon service that allows you to take traffic and balance it across one or more instances. The elastic load balancer is also placed in a security group. So now we can have a security group that controls the traffic flows between the load balancer and all of the compute instances that sit behind it. And when you then use auto scaling, so for example, we have an auto scaling web tier so that as we get more traffic, we scale out. And as we get less traffic, we scale back in. Your security groups will scale out and scale in with those auto scaling events. And this gives you scalable security across your architecture. Now, if you look at this picture, you'll know there is no internet connectivity. So let's add some. When you add an internet gateway to your virtual private cloud, you've given your VPC the ability to route to the internet. You choose what subnets have the ability to route to the internet. And when we have a subnet that can route to the internet, say for example, from where our elastic load balancers are placed, we'll call that a public subnet. Subnets that can't route to the internet, we'll call them private. So for example, your typical back-end services. Once you've added the ability